Now, James McGrath, I'm not sure that you're a constitutional monarchist quite like me, but isn't the monarchy much better off with these people out of it so they can pursue wokeness rather than compromise an esteemed institution that has so many generations, for so many generations, upheld decency? Uh, totally. It's very sad what's happened to Harry. I think everybody loves Harry, but uh, he's just on, on, on this journey. And with Megan Mark, you've got someone who was a, a third-rate actress who's becoming a second-rate princess. And I, I think it's, <laughs> it's, it's good that they are, are over in America. They should stay over in America and they can continue to give out their lectures and live their lives of hypocrisy. Uh, and let's focus on, on those royals who are doing the serious work like Princess Anne and like you know Prince Charles and um, and you know and Prince William in terms of the real work they're doing to defend the values of, of of Queen Elizabeth II. I've seen you promote some support for Aussie products on Twitter. It was mostly deep fried fish and chips and rum, if I recall. But is there anything wrong with elected officials showing support for embattled businesses unfairly targeted by the baying mob? Of course not. And what we're seeing in the States is another exhibit of, of the Trump derangement syndrome. What, what, what the, 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 the CEO said was particularly calm and particularly polite. And he also went on to say later, when quizzed by journos, that if President Obama had invited him to the White House, he would have gone because of his respect for the office of, of president. It is my core job and RAFs uh, to, to promote business and promote jobs because we know that's what creates prosperity in our society. I make no apology for promoting Queensland businesses. I, I speak to you from Cairns. I've spent uh, yesterday driving up here from Townsville with Senator Susan McDonald. We dropped into a range of businesses, including you know the Bingle Bay Beef Company, where that, that, you know small companies that are growing, and that's good because they're growing and they're creating jobs. And that's what we've got to do in this country. We've got to be proud of the products that we have. That's what politicians should be doing. It's about building things up, not tearing them down, which is what the left always try to do. I think it's absolutely outrageous that a, a member of parliament would be suggesting that Australian taxpayers should be funding international students because they're finding it hard to get a job. Is that a bit too hard, James McGrath, or am I, have I bailed the cat here? I, I, I think you're, you're going a bit soft, actually, Corey. Um, <laughs> like, it's, it is, I'm serious. Like, yeah, the, the government, on behalf of the taxpayers, has racked up hundreds of billions of dollars of debt to try and save lives and livelihoods here in, in Australia. You know, we're, we're destroying our, our, effectively our credit rating to protect Australians. We, we don't have the resources or, or, the, or the money to try and, and, and help other people. You're right that these students will tend to come from more, more wealthy backgrounds. But if they want to work, well, come up to your you know, far north Queensland and north Queensland, because there is work in, in parts of Queensland. People, we've got a bit of job snobbery going on here at the moment. People do want uh, to employ people in certain areas, but whether they're Australians or whoever they are, they're not prepared to, to move to the regions and do things like pick fruit. So I'd say to, to the good old Green Senator, well, if they want work, they can move to uh, Queensland, not from Victoria. Sorry, sorry, Raf. And there is work; it's tough work. But um, or they can just bring up the bank of mum and dad, as you said, Corey. Surely this is just common sense. There've been bleeding votes over this stuff for I don't know how long. I mean, we saw the anti Adani sentiment was a disaster for them last year. Do you think this move by some within Labor could actually win back some lost ground if they go down this path? Uh, yes, of course it could win back some lost ground for Labor, which is probably why, deep down, I don't want them to do it, uh, because <laughs> because I'm happy for them to vacate uh, the uh, the field that is Australian pol politics and keep uh, scampering and carpering to, to the left. You just have to look at what happened here in Queensland. 23 out of the 30 seats are held by the LNP. You know, there were big swings uh, against the Labor Party in seats like Capricornia, like Flynn, like Dawson, like Herbert, where the local members and candidates got out there. And it wasn't like a fighting you know, for a company called Adani. It was fighting for what a simple thing, jobs, fighting for jobs. Mm. And that's what you know, the high-vis vote, you know, with, the, with the, the big boots, with the steel caps, and you know, the high-vis vote, 
and that's why they they reacted against Labor. And that's why some of the smart cookies in Labor, uh, and Glenn and Alex, you know, that they're underrated in my view. That they, they they get what what drives people in terms of, of their jobs. It backed up Joel, and I don't want to put words in, in Raf's mouth, but I hope Raf you know supports this this shift against the green extremism and focuses on jobs because that's what this has got to be about in this current climate where we are in, in, in a recession. Uh, you're all in on nuclear, I understand. The EPBC Act review, has that taken place or is it uh, under under uh, current, currently happening? Yeah, it, it's still underway is my understanding. Yeah, I'm a big supporter of nuclear energy and a big supporter of digging up those uh, large deposits of, of uranium that are to the west of, of me here in the, in the northwest of, of Queensland. What about the capacity of Joe Biden? I mean, there are huge questions around um, his cognitive ability, and notwithstanding the failings of, of President Trump, is Joe Biden the man to replace him? Oh, clearly not. You wouldn't trust Joe Biden to operate a toaster. You know, this guy uh, has spent his entire career failing upwards in, in politics uh, and, you know, ended up being vice president uh, because Obama chose him. You know, Obama was all about change, but put him to, as his vice president, someone who was just a classic establishment politician. So, no, Biden uh, is only a, a clear and present danger to himself. 